I'd like to call the November 12, 2000, excuse me, November 20, 2012 meeting of the Buncombe County Commission to order. I'd like to welcome everyone to our new chambers. Uh, this has been a project years in the making. This will be our first meeting here and uh, will be the last meeting for some of our commissioners. And so we appreciate you being here uh, with us today. This is hopefully a chambers we will be at. Uh, any, if we we're anywhere near as long as we were at the courthouse, I think we made it about, what, 90 years over there. We'll probably be here for a good while. So uh, if you'll join me for the pledge, we'll get started with this uh, meeting tonight. Should we do the invocation first? Okay, let's, uh, we're, we're, we're working on the flag. We're going to do the invocation first. <laughs> now I'll ask Vice Chair Stanley to lead us in the invocation, then we'll have our flag in just a minute. Hey. Would you pray with me, please? Our God in heaven, for the many blessings we receive, we are truly grateful. Be our guide and lamp as we meet today, some of us for the last time. We are in your debt for the time spent as Buncombe County Commissioners. We were truly blessed to hold these positions. We thank you for that, and we thank the citizens of Buncombe County for putting us here. We ask thy particular blessing, O oh Lord, on our new board who will be here next month and guide and direct them in all that they do. And please, O oh God, hold our troops that are in harm's way in the palm of your hands and bring them home safely. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you. We have the best staff ever. Thank you. We're close by now. That's a beautiful. That's right. <laughs> Don't have to walk You'll join me to pledge of allegiance to our newly uh, installed flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, thank you, Mandy, for getting that for us. In accordance with the code of ethics adopted by this commission, it's the duty of every member to avoid appearances of conflict and actual conflicts. Does any board member know of any known or potential conflict of interest with, with respect to any matter coming before the commission today? No, sir. No, sir. None. No. If not, is there a motion to follow the agenda as published? So move. Second. Been a motion by Commissioner Peterson, a second by Vice Chair Stanley. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion to follow the agenda as printed, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The motion passes 5 0. We'll proceed with the agenda, including the adoption of the consent agenda items. Our first matter for uh, public hearing is the Economic Development Incentive for Linamar. We'll have Mr. Mike Frew explain the incentive and tell us about the resolution before us. Mr. Frew will be our first witness at the witness box here. Thank you uh, to our spot. county attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Uh, this is an economic development agreement with Linamar number two. Uh, it hadn't been too long ago that we sat past the first incentive agreement with that company, and they're well on their way to. Uh, uh, establishing uh, the workforce of 400 or so employees that they promised under that incentive and have made significant investment in the last couple years on the site, which is the old Volvo plant here in Arden. Uh, what this new plan is, we call it uh, the Linamar Incentive 2, is a plan to build a new 100,000 square foot building sort of in the middle of the facilities, which have two larger buildings right now, and put a new one uh, roughly in the middle. Uh, the plan would be to invest uh, approximately $75 million and, and bring in 250, at least 250 uh, new employees. So that would be brand new hires, not transferred from anywhere, but brand new hires hopefully from, from the community. The incentive agreement would be uh, $4,500,000 paid by the county to Linamar over a period of five years, uh, 10 years, beginning in March 2015 until uh, March uh, uh, 2024. Various scenarios could occur where uh, they could extend that period of time for 24 months in the county if, if uh, another bad economy happens and they're making good faith efforts. We could all agree just to extend that year to year until it's accomplished. Um, as a fail safe, there's, as usual, if they don't meet the minimum investment and job creation standards, which we're going to treat 50 50 in value of importance for the 
450,000 per year. Uh, they may, in certain circumstances, if they are short of that threshold, but make at least 85% uh, by the deadline, which is in 2018, then they would have to repay part of that money uh, back to Buncombe County. And from uh, Lenamar today in, at the home office, we have Heather Smirchina, and uh, she's here to give any other information and describe how the project's going along and answer any questions you might have. And, and the Lenamar has already agreed to the uh, incentive package as drafted, and they've signed off on the copy. So just, uh, I'm Heather Smirchina, and I'm working in business development in Lenamar, and I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Nick Adams and the Industrial Commercial and Energy Group. Um, really just here to express our gratitude for your support through all of phase one and um, give you a quick update on where that stands. Um, we've made huge progress. Um, we've got 128 people on staff now at the site and uh, we're planning to have 150 by the end of the year. Um, we are officially in production now on our two major programs. So uh, the first launch was the Volvo 13 liter engine program. And the second one uh, is for Caterpillar and it's axle, large axle components. And both of those have, have been kicked off. Um, we've passed all of our uh, PPAP approvals and such. And so we're rolling in production right on target. So things are going really well and um, we're on target to meet our our plan, uh, you know, for the, the 400 people and, um, and the continued investment. Uh, the investment to date has been about 70 million in, uh, in capital, so we're right on track on that as well. Um, let's see, going, uh, going forward, that, that really, we're so excited about that, you know, the success and how that's been doing, and we're really looking forward to embarking on phase two of the program. Um, the timing for that uh, will be um, really, the first hires for the second phase will come in the, towards the end of 2014 to start staffing that project. Um, then in 2015, we'll start rolling in the capital for that. We'll begin by capitalizing um, the uh, second building, and then construction on building three would start in, uh, in 20, uh, 2016. So it'll be a oops a little bit of a, a little bit of a ramp up there but it's the same type of precision machining operations um, same type of customers so we're looking to expand product scope with existing customers and also to uh, be in a position to address new strategic relationships so there's a trend in the market for um, for outsourcing uh, the precision machining that we do uh, and for localizing it uh, it's something that the OEMs used to do internally, and more and more they're, uh, they're making strategic alliances and uh, looking to get it close to the end and ship point. So we're, we're really positioned well in North Carolina to do that. So we're looking forward to getting started. So. Heather, I have a question. Um, how have the job applicants been as far as their training? Do you have to do a lot more training, or are we providing you with the uh, employees that we need uh, that you need with the training that you have to have yes yeah, so far it's been it's been going really well there haven't been any issues identified but my uh, expectation is that you know we're kind of tapping the pool and there will be the need the need for the training and support in that area is going to increase as we go as we go forward I could probably answer part of that because uh, the uh, State Board of Community Colleges has a, has a considerable amount of money for training for Lenamar as, as we uh, decided to do uh, with the first phase project. And we haven't spent very much of that money, which means that the people that they're hiring are people who already have all the skills that Exactly, that's that exactly need. right. Yeah, and that's- And uh, probably we're laid off from other companies over, over time. And, right. Uh, I think we're going to be within the next year we'll be in the position where we'll be needing to train uh, uh, many more people as they're yeah, coming no on question. board. Yep. Yeah and that's uh, really one of the big benefits of the the package that you know has been offered to Lindemar and we uh, will be using it for sure taking advantage of that. Need to take the message back to Nick Adams that he can't retire. <laughs> Nick Adams as he's, you he's all know was yet. the person that we uh, that we worked with in establishing uh, of the first project here and uh, and then Heather came along with uh, with the second phase and uh, we're we're excited about when you add all this up now we're talking about 650 jobs uh, over time uh, at that site and that's uh, that's what we need for this this county and this community yep. 
a lot of things you remember over careers long as some of us have up here. And uh, one of the most outstanding things I recall about our economic development is when about a thousand of our citizens were at a Chamber of Commerce dinner. When uh, we announced, uh, Nick and him got up and announced that uh, Lenamar was coming with these jobs and this investment, they got <coughs> about a 10 minute standing ovation. And we were proud of that, proud of yep. that. Well, I think we're just proud that, that manufacturing is coming back here. You've, you've kind of broken the mold, and you're, you're showing that it is something that's an American. Uh, of course, you're Canadian. You know, you have the Canadian yeah, connection. Yeah. You're yeah. North American. That's right. <laughs> and we, uh, we appreciate that. There, there was a feeling at one point that manufacturing was something that was going to be done in other countries besides North America. Right. And we um, were glad. We're glad, and we want to fight for those jobs and we want to give you the kind of employee that you can put right to work and and um, and start paying and start uh, getting the production going and we're thankful thank for you. that. Yeah, thank you. We really appreciate all the support. It's been unbelievable and I mean that really is why we came back for a second round here because you know in Linamar tends to cluster uh, our manufacturing sites and we had to go through our corporate process you know to make the decision on where to put the second phase and you know everything stacked up I mean just the the support and everything is is unmatched that we've gotten here and we really appreciate it all right any other questions Very good. all right well, let's uh, let's start our public hearing um, well, let's see. I guess we need to do a motion to do the resolution first. Is so right? I move that we adopt the resolution. Second. second. There's been a motion and second. Now we'll go ahead and have our public hearing. Uh, I've got uh, 443. Does any member of the public wish to be heard on this motion? Mr. Rice? Mr. Rice will be our first public witness at the witness box tonight. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Question, and it's probably been answered on the first round of a little nature, but I'd like to know what the average person working there, uh, the pay is going to be, not the administrative end of it, but the average person, the laborer. I think that is key. On the other hand, you talk about industry. Uh, coming back, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Thirty what? Thirty-one thousand, Jerry. Thirty-one thousand. That is that uh, gross net. That'd be gross. So uh, you know, we we really need jobs to sustain our folks, and then right. this is a good start. Right. But uh, just to announce to you, they've been sixty-eight going to be laid off in January from an industrial side as well uh, here in Buncombe. So uh, we got a lot of work cut out for us, but this is a start and we appreciate that. Uh, the incentive is $4 million, you say? Uh, let's see, 4.5 over 10 years. With, uh, over 10 years. And that's, Thank that's payment on on a on a schedule is it not 450,000 a year 450 a year for 10 years yes sir okay thank you mr chairman thank you mr rice any other comments or questions on the public hearing for linamar incentive incentive we'll call it incentive number 2 i like that <laughs> if not all call the public hearing closed at 445. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion of the motion to approve the resolution uh, authorizing the incentives and signing the memorandum of understanding? Call for the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The incentive is adopted. Thank you, Heather. Please send our regards to the Linamar team. Next we have a public hearing on the economic incentive for Baldor uh, uh, Electric Company. We're going to have uh, John Creighton and Mr. Spivey talk to us about that. John?
Um, Mr. Chairman, board members, tonight I'd like to talk to you about an economic development incentive for uh, Baldor Electric. It's a, it's a electrical division uh, of a plant that's located in Weaverville. It's a long-term plant. Uh, Baldor's been here since uh, the late 70s. We were approached a couple of years ago by the Chamber of Commerce about a possible expansion at the plant. Uh, at that time, they were proposing the 32 jobs, uh, $4.8 million investment. And uh, the jobs pay $20.29 an hour, which is $42,000 a year. So they're very good paying jobs. It's about $10,000 more than the average wage, manufacturing wage in, in Buncombe. Uh, the one NC fund, which is through the state of North Carolina Department of Commerce, had offered $64,000. Uh, in order for them to be eligible for the for that incentive from the state, uh, we needed to match that. I came to the board at that time. Everybody agreed that that they would want to match that grant. <coughs> Since then, uh, Baldor has made their investment. In fact, they've uh, they've exceeded their investment by a, a large amount. They're just a few dollars short of seven and a half million dollars on the investment. They've started hiring employees. The state wants to go ahead and, and do the first payment of $24,320, and I'd like to recommend that the county match that and go ahead and make that first initial payment since they've met their investment and they've started uh, hiring, hiring people. I would like to ask uh, Dale Spivey, his plant manager, to come up and talk a little bit about their operations here, and then we'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Afternoon. Um, my name is Dale Spivey. I'm the plant manager at the Weaverville facility. Um, I've been there, uh, well, 18 years of the 20 I've worked for the company. Um, it's a great place to work. Um, we, uh, we are a manufacturer of a very diverse group of products. Uh, we make mechanical power transmission products for industrial applications, and we also make hydrodynamic bearings. Um, in fact, the hydrodynamic bearing uh, product is what we brought into the, the company from the Indiana facility. Um, we, uh, we're primarily a machine shop. We have about 156 employees. Um, of that, there's 68 folks that are uh, support of the manufacturing. Um, we have 160,000 square feet. Um, about 7,000 of that was added when we added this product line. Um, to the plant. Um, uh, like, like it was stated earlier, we're a very capital intensive uh, company. We uh, invested the seven and a half million. We ought, we've actually spent another six million since we started this three years ago. So um, we buy a lot of equipment. Um, we have a very flexible, productive uh, workforce, and we really pride ourselves in training, um, trying to keep our folks at the cutting edge. So. Uh, with that, I guess, any questions? I would like to add one other thing about this company is that they have a no layoff policy. That they, they, they pride themselves in when you hire, hire a person, uh, we're gonna try to keep them as long as we have and I think that that's, that's what you all have done. So yeah. I did want to bring that up. Right. It's really, yeah. it's, a, it's a strategy that we, we've adopted to, we work a you know, significant amount of overtime. It's not mandatory overtime, it's voluntary. Um, but our folks know that what we're trying to do, we're trying to maintain everybody's viability. So, uh, it's wonderful. Mm, never heard of that. Are there any questions for Mr. Spivey or Mr. Creighton before we start our public hearing? Is there a motion to adopt Move. the incentive? Second. A motion by Commissioner Bailey, a second by Commissioner Peterson. Let's go ahead and do our public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Spivey. Any members of the public wish to be heard on the uh, Baltimore uh, Electric Company incentive? I've got uh, 4.50 start time. Mr. Rice? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Might be a redundant question, but I'd like to know what the average of the workers' pay is. And I keep bringing this up for a point for commissioners, and that is when jobs are being created. 
we need to take the burden off the taxpayers and not have it on social service because a lot of times 31,000 in a family they could still draw service from what I understand so we need we need jobs that's going to sustain us so that's a question he gave Thank the you. number 40 41,000 42,000 is that include administration uh, no this is if that's just the average employee is going to make that right you mean they're better than Lenormar? Sounds like <laughs> competition already. Thank you. Are there any other public comment tonight? <laughs> if not, I'll call the public hearing to a close at 451. We've got a motion and second. Is there any discussion among the commission? If not, call the question. All those in favor of the Baltimore Electric Company Incentive, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The incentive is adopted 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Spivey. Thank you, Mr. Creighton. Next public hearing we have is the Community Transportation Program Funding Application, and we have Denise Brain to talk about this application. Denise? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. I appreciate this opportunity to come today and just give you a little br brief information about the public hearing and grant application before you today. The purpose of the public hearing is to receive comments on a, our annual grant application to the NCDOT for administrative and capital funds to support the operations of Mountain, mountain Mobility. We're applying for um, $429,783 in administrative funds, which is our annual capitated allocation from the DOT, no change from last year or, or previous years. Our capital grant request totals $212,792, um, and that, uh, those funds would be for the replacement of five, five vans and for eight mobile radios that have either reached their required mileage or age under the DOT standards. Um, local, ma <coughs> excuse me, local match funds would be allocated from our FY 2014 Transportation Division budget. And during the public uh, hearing, we would receive any comments on the actual application. I'd also like to just take a moment and on behalf of Mount Mobility Mobility staff and our uh, patrons who utilize Mountain Mobility, I'd like to thank each of you for your sustained efforts and contributions over the last four years and for, for some of you many more. Without your dedicated efforts and contributions, we wouldn't have the community transportation program we have today. We just appreciate you so much and, and just want to extend our deep appreciation for all your, your support over the years. Thank you. All right, Denise, uh, what do we do with the, the van and the units that we're not going to use anymore? The vehicles that are replaced, um, as w our mobile radio units as well, are placed on gov deals for auction, public auction. Okay, and, we, and I think we determined when we started using that, we get a lot more money uh, for those by doing it that way as opposed to doing it locally or... We, up for we have uh, in the past several years gotten quite a bit more money off the sale of each vehicle. Um, uh, as in the past, all of the revenues from the pro sales, uh, proceeds of any sale of the vehicles have to be used for a transportation purpose. So those proceeds actually go right back into our transportation division and help offset the match of the new vehicles. Great. Okay, any other questions for Denise Brame? Sound like a good investment. We're going to invest about eighty thousand dollars and get about a little over five hundred thousand plus change in return. That ain't all bad. Well, it's a little over six hundred thousand and it's about thirteen well, percent. I, I, don't, I don't have a machine up here like you do. <laughs> I just, you our, uh, our capital <coughs> match is only ten percent. So for that that small investment, we get vans that meet ADA specifications, um, and our administrative grant is only a fifteen percent match. Okay, it sounds like a motion by Vice Chair Stanley to adopt the resolution. Is second. there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Peterson. Uh, let's have our public hearing at 4.55. Any members of the public like to be heard on this application? If not, I will call the public hearing to a close at 4.56. 
We have a motion and second. Is there any discussion among the commission about this application? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. The application is adopted at a 5-0 vote. Uh, any new business? We don't have a county manager's report. I think we determined in pre-session. Is there any new business? I, I would just note that um, there was a discussion in our pre-session about the MSD. We will continue to be represented by Mr. Max Hainer um, as they go through the very uh, complicated and time-intensive um, merger. merger or, or process of merging. Um, with Asheville City. Um, that, of course, a lot has to be done there. Mr. Hayner has served us two terms, but uh, we felt it would be important to continue someone on there that is familiar with the process, and so he'll continue until the uh, new board uh, takes the matter up. Uh, board appointments. We have three groups. Uh, we have Western Highlands Board. Um, are there any nominations? Mr. Chairman, I nominate Janice Price, Janet Price Farrell. Okay, Ms. Farrell's been nominated. Any other nominations? I would nominate Mr. James Pitts. Any other nominations? All right. There have been two nominations. Are there, are there any other uh, discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor of Mr. Pitts say aye. Aye. All those in favor of Janice Price Farrell say aye. 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 Ms. Farrell is appointed uh, four to one. One vote for Pitts, four for Farrell. Workforce Development Board, there are two vacancies. Are there any nominations? Chairman, I nominate Timoth Lampkin and Adelia Parra. Okay, Mr. Lampkin and Ms. Parra has been nominated. Are there any other nominations? All those in favor of those individuals say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Mr. Lampkin and Ms. Parra are appointed to the Workforce Development Board. Uh, Economic Development Coalition, we have five vacancies. Are there any nominations? Mr. Chairman, I nominate Jeff Powers, Paul Zurich, Suzanne DeFerry, Ray Bailey, Mark Hunt. I'm not sure about that second that bottom one. There. Yeah, that fourth well, I, one. I, I, Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> you, you probably heard worse than that, right? I did. I'm trying to get you out of some of this stuff. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Are there any other nominations? We appreciate those individuals, including Commissioner Bailey, serving. All those in favor of the five individuals listed, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Mr. Powers, Mr. Zurich, Ms. DeFerry, Mr. Bailey, Commissioner Bailey, and uh, Councilman Hunt have been appointed. All right, announcements. Board members will attend a reception uh, next door at 35 Woodfin Street to thank the outgoing commissioners. The board members will attend an organizational meeting for the new board on November 29 and 30, beginning at 9 o'clock and ending at 5 o'clock each day. This will be a retreat that will be held at 200 College Street, first floor conference room. The Commission will hold an organizational meeting on December 3rd at 9 o'clock, immediately following their swearing in, which will begin at 8.30 a.m. in room 326 of 200 College Street in downtown Asheville. The next regular meeting of the Commission will be held on December 4, beginning at 4.30 in the Commission Chambers, 200 College Street, room 326 in downtown Asheville. Commission meetings can be seen at BCTV Charter Cable Channel 2, ATT UVerse Channel 99, live on BuncombeCounty.org during the meetings, or online anytime at BuncombeCounty.org. Uh, we are going to have a closed session in a minute. Um, let's go ahead and do public comment first. The official county of the businesses of the, the business of the county is concluded, and we'll now have public comment. The time limit for comment to the Commission is three minutes. If your time expires, you may leave your questions along with your name, address, phone number, and, e or, and, or, and or email with the County Manager. Commission members are not expected to comment on matters during public comment. This is our time to hear from you. 
Comments should be limited to subjects that are within the jurisdiction of the commission or to, or to pertain to matters upon we, which, which we may act. Any individual speaking during public comment shall address the entire board. Any polling of board members is inappropriate. And uh, people addressing the board are expected to observe the decorum of the chamber and to be respectful of everyone in the room. Any person who willfully interrupts, disturbs, or disrupts the session will be asked to leave the meeting, and the board reserves the right to deny public address on any subject previously presented to the commission. Uh, any public comment tonight? Mr. Rice? Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, and thank you for your consideration for me being nominated, and I appreciate the interview on the Western Highland Board. Uh, I think that we need to probably look at reevaluating our room here that we've got. It's a very nice place. I think it's not conducive to our public too well and our media people because we have to stand in the back of the room. I think there need to be something done here to kind of give a little bit of uh, help to people that's so far back, and uh, I think that would help. It's a very nice uh, place. Uh, I would also like to bring to your attention that uh, the Western Highland Board, uh, that is going to be a very serious uh, situation that is going to be coming to the county commissioners and because it could cost the county uh, quite a bit of money and it's going to have to be looked at very closely. It's going to impact the Department of Social Service, it's going to impact the jail, it's going to impact, d impact the community at large and this is not no small matter. And the legislators need to be notified, they need to be involved and the new delegation of people, they need to be educated on this thing because the city as well needs to be notified. The city don't have a member on this board. They never have. You got 350 or 550 municipalities and there's not a representative from the city nowhere. So I feel that the city has more people in the city that we deal with with Western Highlands than anywhere. So uh, I think legislators need to know that, and I think it might help some way. And we appreciate your service, Mr. Stanley, for the country and for the county commissioner. And we appreciate each of the others as well as you go out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. For any of the public comment tonight? Yes, right ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioners, my name is Leanne Smith. I live in Arden, and um, I just want to thank you for your support as we have worked really hard to um, um, conten continue to provide healthy water to the people within the proximity of the CTS site. And what you've done and your efforts to work on getting the water lines run out to us go a long way toward that and we really appreciate all your efforts so I just wanted to let you know thank you very much thank you Miss Smith any other public comment tonight all righty next up we're going to have a closed session is there a motion to go into closed session and I believe that we're going to come out and continue the meeting is that yes. right so yes, the motion correct. would be to go into closed session with the understanding we'll be coming out of it and expect further meeting well, for their action yes sir and statutory reason I, I need to mention is uh, general statute 143 318 11 4 for two economic development matters we just anticipate some direction from the board okay so the you don't anticipate action on the economic development not out in open session. out in open but we will come back in for other business uh, yes, after sir. the uh, okay so we go into closed session. 
beauty of it is, Mr. Chairman, is our fine always don't have to move. We're going to go in a little room out back. It's not the outhouse, but it's a room where we can meet, and y'all stay right where you are. We'll be right back. All right, so there's been a motion uh, by Commissioner Bailey uh, to go into closed session. A second by Commissioner Peterson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're in closed session. Sam. All righty. We had a um, closed session for the reasons stated. We've had a motion to go back into open session that was approved by a 5 0 vote. I am looking for a motion to recess this meeting to go next door to 35 Woodfin to finalize our meeting tonight. So moved. Been a motion by Commissioner Peterson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bailey. Is there any discussion? Um, all those in favor of the motion to recess. I, I do want to recognize Vice Chair Stanley before we close, before we leave. Uh, with that proviso, is there any uh, discussion? All those in favor of the motion to recess our meeting to go next door, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. We will be going in just a minute, but I wanted to hear from our Vice Chair. Folks, I uh, am spending my last uh, minute or two in this chair, mm -hmm. and I've been here for, I don't know how many meetings, 24 years is, but that's a bunch. And it was enough, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I wish, I think about four or five of them are here, and I wish the new bunch well. You got a great bunch of people to work with, the greatest county in the country, without question. Um, my baby daughter's here with one of her sons in her ward, Mary Jane T Taylor, and Will, Will Taylor's back there with Eddie Kelsey from Boca Raton. And we appreciate I don't think you've been here before, little girl, have you? No, she hadn't. Her first time. My last meet, so she comes to meet. See me. But I, I thank all of you, particularly yeah, the that, greatest that. staff that's ever walked this earth. And uh, thank you kindly. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay. Other comments? Any other comments before we adjourn or move recess? Uh, just, uh, just to say that I've enjoyed my four years here. Uh, um, certainly not anywhere near uh, the amount of time that Bill Stanley has spent. Um, but I've had the opportunity to work uh, on economic development projects. We just talked about some uh, in, our, in our closed session. Uh, I take a great deal of pride in the number of jobs that we've created. I looked, I had them run the numbers. In the last four years, we've created about 2,700 jobs with about $700 million in investment for this community. And uh, so I challenge, uh, uh, I see, uh, uh, those who are who are returning, and I see uh, Mr. Belcher and Mr. King out there. Don't don't let's don't stop doing that. It's important to the people of this community that we create good jobs for everybody. So uh, thank you all for letting me uh, be a part of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Now I'll go home. I'll go home, and my wife will say, "Why didn't you introduce me?" Because Bill, you know, talked about his daughter. There's my, my wife, Glenda, who has uh, been e extremely supportive in all of my years uh, in, in, in public service, about 50 of those. And my two daughters, Elizabeth and Krista, have joined her, and I appreciate you all being here. And it's good to appreciate your good support. Thank you. Well, okay. if, if, I might, if I may say, this has been an a, a absolute pleasure for me. Um, and I, I can't say enough about the great staff and, and especially the citizens of Buncombe County. Um, we have uh, folks who, who work here in Buncombe County and many of the leaders are here today that, that get up every day to do the job that needs to be done for the citizens of Buncombe County. And I think that's, that's the driving force for folks who, um, who serve in elected office and that is to, to um, 
do the work that the citizens need to be done and and hoping at the end of the day that all of us um, can can say that we've made a difference and I know everyone up here um, agrees with me and there are um, my family members will be next door but I want to say that my family is really the citizens of Buncombe County and uh, I feel that way from the bottom of my heart so uh, thank you for the opportunity um, and we'll all be around thanks a bunch We will we'll readjourn next door. I'm David Gant, Buncombe County Commission Chair, and we have adjourned our regular meeting to come over here and honor some very, very special people. We've got three commissioners that we will be saying goodbye to, but we sure won't forget them. Let's, uh, let's do this procedurally, right? I guess we need a motion to go back into open session. Is there a motion? Second. There's a motion by Vice Chair Stanley, a second by Commissioner Peterson. All in favor say aye. 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 That's good. 5-0, we're back in open session. Uh, we have three of the finest public servants we're going to honor tonight. We're going to start off with... Uh, a gentleman that uh, has been the director of America's favorite, f famous, favorite community college, has been a promoter, has been a wonderful commissioner who understands all the aspects of buildings and some of the budget. Uh, he teaching me things I'm ashamed to say how long I've been on the commission. And Commissioner Ray Bailey was telling me some things I didn't know about the budget. <laughs> We're thrilled to have him. It's been a great four years. What we're going to do is we have something to give Commissioner Bailey and Commissioner Peterson and Stanley. But I'm going to ask if anybody wants to get up and speak first before I ask uh, maybe uh, Commissioner Bailey to say some final words. Anybody want to say a few words before we get started? Then I'm going to make a presentation to them. And I would ask uh, that the other commissioners maybe come up behind here. So, we close enough? No, nope, can't hear. Okay. How about that? Oh boy. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and do our presentation. Stacy, what's behind the counter here? Glenda, let me get the uh, uh, Commissioner Bailey's family up here. This is inscribed to Commissioner Ray Bailey, County Commission 2008-2012. And I can't think of anyone that deserves this more. Come on up there, family. Ray, why don't you introduce your family and let me present this. We have to do this a lot higher for him. Sorry. Uh, thank you, David. It's, uh, it, it, of course, you know I feel like with the with the other commissioners who were who were who were leaving as well, especially Bill's 24 years. My four was just a sort of a drop in the bucket, but uh, uh, I certainly enjoyed the four years that I've had. I was uh, in the in the chambers a while ago. I was talking about uh, some of the good things that happened over these past four years, especially economic development, uh, which I was fortunate enough to be on the EDC and. Uh, and uh, be the chamber's rep to, to continue on that. Uh, I think over the last four years, I, I was what I looked at was we created about 2,700 jobs, about 700 million dollars in investment in the community, and I got to serve on the TDA board for uh, uh, for four years. And uh, they have a product development fund that is really doing a lot of great things for people in this community. And, of course, I, I'll have to tell you that one thing that I'm really proud of is, uh, and anybody in law enforcement or uh, man, you know where I'm coming from. We worked, I think, probably for about 15 years trying to find a way to get a, uh, a public service training center for, for this county. 
our people were having to drive to uh, Gaston County and to Mecklenburg County. And it all started when I was at AB Tech and we tried to find the right place to put it. And we didn't have enough land. And, uh, uh, so finally, as a, as command, with all the other commissioners, we were able to, uh, to develop what I think is probably the finest public service training center in North Carolina and maybe in the southeast, according to some of the architect people. And it's going to help all of the people who are who, who serve us in this county on a daily basis. Uh, and as Bill will tell you, probably one of the great things too is and that he told me when I started running, no tax increase. He didn't say it exactly like that. He used a little more stronger <laughs> language. And uh, we were able to do that over those four years. And I think the people in the community appreciate that. So I, I've enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed my, my time as commissioner. Uh, I've got my, uh, my my two daughters, Krista and Elizabeth, uh, wife Glenda, who all uh, who have uh, been uh, very supportive of everything that I've done. I'm I'm nearing my 50th year in public service, and so I I'm, I'm trying to find ways to kind of ease out, and do a few things, and then give us a chance to go to the beach house. More often, but thank you all. I thank the staff, uh, Wanda, Mandy, and John, and all the other staff people for the county. You've all just been absolutely fantastic to work with, and I appreciate that. Uh, made it a whole lot easier uh, for me and for all the other commissioners with the with the good work that you've done. So thank everybody. Thank you very much, and I'll be I'll be in the community. Thank you. sculpture was made in Black Mountain by Harriet and Don Herrick. The next individual I'd like to recognize on behalf of the community is Carol Peterson. <laughs> Carol's been an educator. She's been a leader in every sense of the word. She has moved our commission on issues concerning farming, on economic development. Everything we good we've done has got our fingerprints on it. And we would be nowhere near the level of competence and the level of achievement if Carol Peterson hadn't given us eight years of her life, giving everything she had. Carol, we're mighty proud of you. We also have for you. To slip up here. Bruce, come on up here. We have another sculpture from the Herrick uh, Black Mountain Studio, Carol Peterson County Commission, 2004 2012. And this doesn't do justice for everything she's done for us, but it's a small token of the community's appreciation for the endless hours you've given us and all the time, energy, and commitment you've given people in Buncombe County. Thank you, Carol. These words will be short and sweet. First of all, let me say that Ray Bailey just said he just made a little, he was just a little drop in the bucket. That man was a splash when he came on the commission. No question about that, he made a splash in the bucket. Let me say just a word or two about Bill Stanley because I won't have a chance to do that since he's the next one to be honored. But this man is, we, Bruce and Bill and Jane and I go back 250 years at least. We all talked together at Asheville High within the Asheville City School System, and this, this, this is a great man, and this community has been, uh, this community is better because Bill Stanley has been at the helm of this commission for 24 years. Trust me, I know. I know as an educator, and I know as a person who's been involved in, in community work and, and working with Buncombe County that this man, this is an icon. So we are so fortunate that that, that he has honored Buckham County with his presence. Just very quickly, let me say, as I said in the commission chamber, um, we all have our family, but I've said that um, Buckham County citizens are really my family. I truly feel that way. 
I, I believe that our commission has worked hard and, and I have tried to, to work to see that the core services were delivered to every citizen of Buncombe County, whatever their level of need. And I think we've done that under Wanda's direction, Mandy's direction, and John Creighton's direction, in addition to all the fine county staff. Anyone who is listening in TV land or BCTV land, I want you to know that you have the best staff, the absolute national model staff in Buncombe County. So please know how fortunate you are as Buncombe County citizens. We have a national model in so many things that we do, and if I start to list the things that we have had our fingerprints on as commissioners these last few years, you would be astounded at all the things that I would say, this is a national model, what Mandy's done in Health and Human Services. This is a national model, what Van has led with his in, within the Sheriff's Department. These are national models, the fact that we have a AAA bond rating in, in, this, in this economic climate. And I could go on and on and on. This commission has worked hard to make sure that we have the education, the workforce development, the economic development, the caring for our citizens more than any group of people that could be assembled. Please know how much we care for the citizens of Buncombe County. That's what we get up every day and hope that we have some, some bearing on. It has been a highlight of my life. I always say that we have worked, and let me say I say we because this man right here if I'm there, he's right there beside me, and that's the only way it will work, is that you have a, a partner in this, and this man uh, is my partner, my husband, Bruce. But thank you, everyone. It has been my sheer joy and pleasure to have anything to do with county government. Anything to do, because I'm a proud person, a proud Buckingham County native, and it has truly been my pleasure to be a small part, just a small part, of what's happened in this county. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for everything you've done. The next honoree is our vice chair, Bill Stanley. Woo! Bill Stanley. <laughs> it's going to get a lot better. Bill has been, you know, you hear a lot. You build on the people that come before you. You stand on their shoulders and try to just improve what they do. I'll tell you a few things, and I'm going to ask for people to come up. Then we've got a special presentation for Bill after 24 years. Let me do this first, though. I want to recognize some people, and I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to recognize the elected officials real quickly here. We've got uh, three, or th three or four of our Commissioner elects Joe Belcher, David King, we've got Mike Fryer, of course Commissioner Jones is here, we've got uh, Sheriff Van Duncan, we have John Mitchell from the uh, Senator Burr's office, we have, uh, I'm going to recognize President of the National or the State Association, uh, Howard Hunter, who's come six and a half hours to say something about our honoree. Uh, we have Steve Sizemore with the school board. And all the department heads or all the county employees who have come here to honor these commissioners, raise your hand. And let's give them a big hand. Wow. I think I want the last words. I'm going to recognize President uh, Howard Hunter III. He's come here from Hertford County. Let's give him a, let's give him a West North Carolina welcome. down. It takes a different kind of person to serve in politics. I just want to thank each of you for serving the citizens of Buncombe, Buncombe County and the citizens all across the state. I was elected in 2004 and I met Commissioner Bill Stanley 
at a NACO conference in Washington, D.C. I was introduced to him by another past president and a very close friend of his, DuPont Davis. Those were the good old days, right, Bill? Bill became a good friend of mine. Four years ago, I asked Bill, or rather I told Bill, I was going to run for second vice president for the State Association of County Commissioners. And I asked Bill, would you please make my nominating speech? He said he would. Never happened. <laughs> Made me wonder if his initials stood for Bill Stanley or something else. I guess you know what the BS is, right? <laughs> Bill was smarter than that. Once no one announced, or should I say had a chance to announce from the floor, Bill closed the floor. So I won by acclamation. He was smarter than I was. Every year, Bill was the man that closed the floor until I became automatic taking the president for the State Association of County Commissioners. Bill, I did not come here representing the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Lisa did. I came here because I call you a friend. We need more people like you all that run the state. We're losing 24 years just from Bill. That's why I chose mentoring as one of my reasons for my initiative this year. 24 years is a lot of experience to lose. We need more people like you guys to help mentor those younger commissioners, those inexperienced commissioners. I'm going to ask Lisa right now if she would come up and present uh, Commissioner Stanley with the gift from the association. Bill if, Bill, if you will, please. Thank you, President Hunter. I am here on behalf of the association, but um, on behalf of myself as well. Good, good, and I'm glad good. to call you my friend as well and to echo Commissioner Peterson's words. The association is better for your involvement and your leadership. And so on behalf of the association, I am proud to present to you this small token of your service on our board of directors. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. not from the association, this is from me. In the morning, you need something to wash your mouth with all the BS that you've told over the years. <laughs> for, 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 for breakfast. <laughs> I got a ticket for, for dinner for you and your wife. <laughs> if, if your wife doesn't want any, you can throw your glasses away and drink out the bottle. <laughs> Congratulations, you deserve it. Thank you, thank you, buddy. That's great. All right. All right, got a little more business. All right. Let me get that away. No, sir. You stay put. We're, at a, we're still in session right now. I do see, I want to recognize Councilman Jan Davis for being here. Thank you for coming. Uh, Representative Nathan, and former Chairman Nathan Ramsey is here. Thank you. Former County Manager Bill McElrath is here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for taking time out to honor this man because he's meant a lot to all of us. Now, before we get going, I'd like to finish up our business, and I would ask that... Uh, the commissioners that are here to consider a motion to name the building that we're standing on the William H. Stanley Center. Is there a motion? <laughs> There's a motion by, motion by Commissioner Davidson. It's my, it's my pleasure to make a motion that we name this building the William H. Stanley Center. And there's a second by Commissioner Bailey. Is there any discussion? <laughs> if not, all those, all the commissioners in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. 
This building is herefore known as the William H. Stanley Center. with anybody, and I've never felt like I was with a rock star more than I am when I'm with Bill Stanley. When Bill Stanley started off here, we were in the Dirty Dozen. We had some of the worst schools. Bill Stanley fought for the schools. He said, look, I know what it takes. I'm going to do something about this. Our employees, some of our law enforcement sheriff were on welfare, and we were ashamed of that. Bill Stanley said, I'm going to do something about that. I'm going to make sure that everybody that works for Buncombe County gets paid right. We had to decide a landfill. Bill Stanley said, I'm going to do this. I don't like this part of the job. Uh, he thought zoning was it. He said this was worse than zoning. So, he, But he did a landfill. He did the right thing. Every good thing that's happened in Buncombe County is because Bill Stanley pushed it, prodded it, made it happen. These things don't happen without strong leadership, and Bill Stanley has been the strongest leader we've had on our board, and we cannot replace him. All right, big guy, this is it. Hey, all right, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bill. You're bigger. You're bigger. You're bigger. I, uh, I can't talk, folks. This, this, oh. Well, it's how you get elected, big right? You get a big family. I got one or two of mine here with me tonight. I think they're all standing here. There's some Appalachian boys, some uh, Pembroke boys and girls, and, and uh, my lovely daughters, and my grandsons, and my ballerina. Oh, she's behind her grandmother. There she is. And this, she's our only granddaughter of our, our grandchildren. And uh, we'd go off on a trip, and we'd come in, and the boys would get maybe a T-shirt or a pin, and Blair would get a whole outfit of clothes. And I think her big brother Stan, who if you've ever been blowing rock, you want some real good food, he's executive chef at Crippins. So go up there and eat, it's pretty good food. But he said to his grandmother, oh, Missy, this is really not fair. In her stalwart and intelligent way, she said, life is not fair. The girl gets anything. Now, the, when we first got elected, and we were sitting around a table at home, and we'd been, they came to the inauguration. My blessed mother was there and held the Bible for me the first time. And we were gone home and we we're having supper. And one of the boys said, Missy, now that, that uh, Papa is a, is a county commissioner, are we all going to be county commissioners? She says, No, no, son, just your Papa and me. <laughs> but thank you, thank you, young people, for coming here. All my tribe. I truly appreciate that. But folks, I, I'm gonna quit talking. This wonderful food here, and I, I, I can't even think after what, what's happened here, really. It's, it's absolutely, positively unreal. Uh, there's some great things in my time, but I, I think Mark, some of them are gonna give me a chance to see that maybe in a media thing or something one of these days, and I'll do that, but I, I just can't talk. Let's, let's, let's enjoy each other and eat this food. Get, go to it, all right? We've got one more presentation I want you to see, and it's right outside this door. So if we could adjourn, let's see. Let's do a motion to adjourn the county commission meeting first. Is there a motion? Adjourned. Motion by Vice Chair Stanley, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor, aye. So our, our meeting is adjourned. Let's go outside and see what we have out here real quick, and then let's come in and have some good fellowship and good food. <laughs>